Okay, um, this is the second of my videos um, about electronics. This one is about uh, this thing here, uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, which uh, I'm going to be using mainly um, to do robotics. Uh, without further ado, let's have a quick look how that works. So if you come over here, so this is my Raspberry Pi. You can see it's connected up to various things at the moment, including um, some LEDs, a servo, and a robot. Uh, so when you boot up into uh, 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 your Raspberry Pi, uh, the first thing you'll see is this coloured screen. Um, and then uh, uh, once you go past that, um, it'll load whatever OS you have installed. So in this case, I have my Berry Boot. And you can see on here, Berry Boot has a number of different uh, programs uh, installed. Arch Linux, uh, Debian Raspbian, uh, and Ubuntu Mate, which is actually my favourite one. And uh, yeah, it should be uh, up and running in a second. Uh, the amazing thing about this, this is like nothing uh, I've ever seen on a Raspberry Pi. If you look at the size of the device, it's just incredible um, how you can uh, uh, load this kind of uh, uh, this kind of software into this thing. Uh, to be honest with you, I think it's probably my favourite computer now um, because of what else you can do with it in terms of connecting to other devices. So this is my folder here. While well, I do drag and drop, um, and it's asking my password because it's because it's a root. Uh, requirement and within a couple of seconds um, you should see it up and running there you go so here's canvas running uh, in the background uh, and uh, I just love this program um, in terms of development it just makes life so easy uh, here you can see here's my interface here so you can see this is, it says it's, it's a servo controller you can adjust uh, the location of your various uh, elements really really easily um, Okay, uh, you can move buttons around without any problem. This is a timer, uh, which we use in the program in a minute. And just to show you, so I'll just show you it running now. So there we go. Uh, we've got our program up and running on screen. Uh, just shrink down the bits that we don't need. So you've got a native Linux app um, uh, running very easily. And just to show you some of the things it can do. So uh, this is some really basic uh, things which I, which I showed my kids. So um, I put my daughter's names on, uh, on onto a label, which you can click um, a button uh, to use, just like you would do in Visual Basic. So there you go, two names, and then put my name in. And there you go, okay. And so this is, uh, we're using it as a servo controller. So just uh, put that instead. Okay, right. So um, and then we can clear box. So as you say, very intuitive. Um, the other thing, it works very well natively with all uh, aspects of uh, Linux. So for instance, the opacity control here, you can see I can fade my window down to nothing if I want to. Yeah. Um, next, um, the first thing I did, um, because um, I used to work with uh, Visual Basic and my Arduino robot here. So uh, you can control, um, uh, you, can, you can send input output instructions um, through USB. Um, so in this case, what's happening is the Arduino robot's powered by the Raspberry Pi. Um, through a USB. Uh, really simple again. So just to show you the kind of things you can do. So if we wanted to move the robot's knee, so we would click on the knee. Hopefully you can see that. Um, the other knee. So my robot normally would walk on the ground, but uh, just to make life easy, because I'm currently in development of it. Um, so that's the hip movements and the other hip. And because you're using it through a graphical interface, you can just click on things and you could use, for instance, the scrolling uh, um, uh, aspect of the mouse um, to move your yeah, to move the knees of the robot. So hopefully that's quite straightforward. Um, so other things you can do. So um, these are some LED lights that are connected through the um, uh, pins of the, um, uh, of the Raspberry Pi. In this case, you can uh, control the LED lights. Um, so if I try and turn on the uh, uh, blue bulb, just by clicking the mouse here, uh, you can see um, um, that I can uh, uh, turn the uh, light on and off very easily. And I have another uh, yellow light, the same. And you can see that it works in real time without any problems, and also red light here. Also, you can have all three on, so there's plenty of power in the Raspberry Pi. Um, to run this and run the robot at the same time and power the robot and the servos, which is really quite amazing. Because uh, really, you wouldn't think that uh, 
you'll be able to do that quite so easily if you can. Um, so um, there are other th other uh, things you can do too. So in this case, uh, what I've done is I've uh, uh, connected um, a servo here as well. So uh, the servo can uh, also uh, so it's connected through the same ground, and it has a separate um, uh, uh, PWM pin that, that uh, controls the, the servo. So again, if we um, look at the hardware PWM, uh, we can see here. As I move this, you can hear the servo, and hopefully you'll be able to see the servo. Um, twist and turn according to my, uh, and again you can use the scroll wheel, uh, uh, hopefully, there you are, yeah, uh, I'll bring it over here, you can see hopefully then, move your servo, um, and you could also move it um, using the uh, mouse, okay, right, um, and also you can run it programmatically, so I got all this to work, but my daughter, bless her, said, okay daddy, that's all very well, but can you make it do it without touching anything? So I said, well yeah, I think probably we could. So, before I show you that, uh, I thought with these lights, we've got three lights, um, we don't have, unfortunately have a green light, but I thought I would mimic some um, UK traffic lights. So, if we just look up, ah, here we go, so let's restore what I did before. So again, you can see how quick uh, uh, Ubuntu runs on, uh, on this uh, Raspberry Pi uh, 3 compared to Raspberry Pi 2. It's just totally um, uh, night and day. So uh, yeah, here we go. So here's some UK traffic lights, just to show you what we're doing. So um, yeah, uh, here. So uh, you should see a red, red, amber, green, then back to amber, and then back to red. So notice that there's slight difference on the way up and on the way down again. So hopefully we've managed to do that programmatically, and also uh, we're going to get the servo to spin too. So my other program, just running in the background, just doing nothing at all really. I'm just sitting as a native Linux program. So this is not even running um, as a as executable, this is running um, as a, a, into the debugger. So it's probably even faster still. Um, but uh, you just, uh, in this case, you click this to start a timer. And if you look on here, um, you'll see the servo is spinning on its own. So running through um, a sweep. And if you want to zoom in on that. Um, and then you can see um, the bulbs. So you see you're getting, um, uh, well, blue should be green, uh, and then amber, stop, and then uh, amber, and, uh, amber and red, and blue again. Yeah. So um, even while it's running, you still can control things. So if I flash the yellow light now, just to show you, or if I flash the blue light, you can see that you still have control. Uh, probably not a good idea to try and control the server while it's sweeping. So if I stop things, again, it just stops in mid-cycle. You can start and stop without any problems. And you can just see how quick this runs. And again, even with all this running, you still can run your robot without any difficulties at all. Okay. That's the big limbs moving as well there. So again, uh, uh, that's controlled through USB and powered through USB. So just before we finish, I think that's pretty much... Um, uh, everything I want to show you, um, uh, I will show you my code in a second about how uh, this all happened, but uh, just looking at the uh, GPIO pins here. So you'll notice that uh, there's 40 pins here um, on the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi. Um, a lot of people have been trying to get this kind of thing working on the Raspberry Pi, but failing. And I think the real problem here is actually not any difficulty in actually doing it, but in the way the documentation is um, in the various libraries that you have um, for controlling this. So if I show you what I've done, I've actually um, uh, uh, read, uh, redid uh, the, the pins here. So this shows you um, uh, what actually is, is going on here. So um, the pins are labeled 1 to 40 here. Uh, and the real problem is actually um, the way that the Broadcom, the Broadcom who make the chip um, have labeled their, their processor versus the, the way the libraries work are just totally random, okay? And this is why a lot of people are having trouble actually getting it to work. But uh, as soon as you understand um, which pin corresponds to which um, uh, um, to which uh, physical pin, so as you see here, an example is the Broadcom, Broadcom 4 GPIO uh, has a, uh, in, in the uh, library is uh, pin is 7, which is physically 7. So that would make most people think, well, all the other pins would be labeled physically, but you'd be wrong. So the next pin along, so you follow down 
on the uh, Raspberry on the Raspberry Pi is actually pin 17.rcy, which corresponds in the library to pin zero, uh, which is totally strange. So if you try to physically address it to pin 11, you think nothing is working. So uh, yeah, um, it also has uh, yeah access to other things. It has PWM hardware, uh, which basically enables you to run servos. Um, so a couple of PWM pins here. Uh, pin 23, um, uh, pin 12, which I'm using for this. Again, um, I sat there for a good while thinking, why on earth is my servo not spinning? And the reason is because pin 12 is equivalent to, uh, in, the, in the library, 1, which makes no sense at all. So this is why a lot of people are having real trouble getting it to work, mainly because of the pin mappings, which is just crazy. Okay, so um, just to show you lastly my code, so um, the key to actually making this all work, well, there's two keys really. Um, the great thing about using Arduinos with this is that the Arduinos work um, straight out of the box. You don't need any drivers. You don't even need the Arduino um, IDE installed, um, which I haven't even installed on here yet. I don't even know if you can, presumably you can. Um, but uh, uh, you just plug your Arduino in and work with it like any other input output device. Um, and uh, here we just stop the program itself, which will there you go. All right. And if you actually have a look at the uh, code, uh, which is here, so uh, there's two halves to, to the code itself. One one half is uh, using the wiring pi library, which is available online. Okay. So this is all the setup for the library you'll see here at the beginning. Okay. Um, and then um, the second half, uh, so, so that that's using the, the wiring pi. So uh, in terms of actually programming things, it's very straightforward. You set up the library wi wiring pi setup. You set what the pins do, so pin 7 output, as I said, pin 0 uh, output, and the PWM, which is pin 1 here, that's been initiated here. And then you literally just write to those pins, it's very straightforward, um, which allows you to do things like the servo sweep, etc. Uh, and then um, secondly, um, then there's the uh, uh, talking to the Arduino, which again is pretty straightforward. Um, Arduinos um, have a serial port, and you just... Um, um, handshake with it basically you just you just have some kind of um, code for, for the other end of the Arduino so um, that's that's arbitrary that depends on what you have um, uh, uh, what, what you programmed your Arduino to do but essentially you just open a serial port and start running to it which is really really straightforward so again in this case um, uh, the way I've done it is um, I have um, a little array that sends a couple of um, um, a couple of bytes to the to the uh, Arduino telling it which server to move and where to move it to. Uh, and that's how the sliders work in this program. So that's that really. Um, uh, hopefully um, you also use Gambus. Uh, I think it's a, one, a really great piece of software that uh, enables you to interface with uh, all sorts of uh, uh, devices really, really easily, all sorts of, all sorts of hardware really easily. Um, uh, so yeah, and uh, I'll try and uh, uh, make some of this accessible um, to people so that they can actually get it working because uh, uh, I think there are a lot of people frustrated out there not able to really get this to, to work. Um, so hopefully this helps some of you guys. Okay.